uh, next week of starting the 3030 challenge. So if you've been tracking with us up to this point, um, you have probably uh, been doing uh, about a week of this so far. And so uh, so today uh, for this is me going to be doing uh, our 3030 challenge for our families. And so uh, remember our 3030 challenge that we have set up here at Royal Palms is 30 days uh, uh, for for the next 30 days and 30 minutes a week. That's what we're hoping to do. And, um, and so, yeah, I, uh, I hope you guys will do this. If you've got young kids, um, you know, we're going to be going through uh, the book. We're going through this book right here, Cornerstones. And um, just to keep in mind, uh, when we go through the book Cornerstones together, um, that the questions that we're sending out to you uh, are, are ones that uh, you're getting three a week. Uh, truth is, if, if you if you can get through all three of them, wonderful. Uh, but if you can only get through just one of them, okay, that's fine. But the goal is to just begin to just say, we're doing for the next 30 days, just regular time together uh, with our kids. And so uh, I would suggest that if you go through some of these questions uh, in the book, right, if you're going to go through Cornerstones and you're going to do one of the questions, um, maybe, you know, maybe you realize, okay, my kids have gotten a little bit faster. They, they've memorized um, but maybe you need to then kind of look and say, okay, well, what else do I supplement for? Uh, maybe start reading. Find a, find it, start with a book of the Bible and just start reading it together with them. So uh, today, though, we are going to be dealing with uh, question number two. Uh, and uh, for so uh, this comes from the book Cornerstones. Question number two uh, is on from the section on God, uh, and it's this. In how many persons does God exist? In how many persons does God exist? So, okay, here's the, the issue here, right? Um, as you're going to look at this, you're probably thinking like, this is a tough one, right? How do I talk about this? Uh, and so we want to be able to talk about uh, how does God work? Uh, and so, uh, and, and, and so, so far you've looked at three questions in here already, but now we're going to say uh, in the Bible, right, we're having to deal with the concepts of like, okay, what do we do? We got Jesus, we've got God the Father, we've got the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, and so you're probably processing, saying, how do I, how do I talk about this? How do I, how do I begin to work on this with my kids? So the question is, and how many persons does the does God exist? The answer that you want to train your kids, the answer you want to be trained in is God is one God in three persons. God is one God in three persons. You know, Christians are not polytheists. Uh, you can tell really quickly uh, people who will claim to be Christian, but when they don't affirm the Trinity, as we call it, um, you've gone off the rails somewhere. Uh, because the Bible is so, so clear. We have one God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, beginning in verse 4, and you'll, you'll see how clear it is. There is only one God. Yet, even in the Old Testament, we see that there's something about our God who is one that begins to build this concept. And it's one that comes uh, both in the Old Testament, fi figured out in the Old Testament and brought in to the New. Um, but you'll see, right, like um, the, the, the God of the Bible is doing something. And if you were with us the other day on Sunday, uh, as we were preaching through and teaching through the book of, of um, Daniel, you start to ask, okay, well, who is this guy in the fire, right? Who is the guy who is... Uh, who's with them at this whole time. And so those are things that you want to ask. Okay, so how do I deal with that? Who is, how is it that God is both in the fire with them, but God is out? Uh, you know, so there's, there's some stuff to kind of process. So I love the answer that we get uh, when we talk about this, which is this, is the answer comes back down to um, that um, God exists, right? I'm going to get my face out of this thing. God is one God in three persons. We have one God who is in three persons. So let's talk about some points, and I'll maybe give you another verse. But let me show you something just really quickly while we're at it. I want to go to my text, uh, my Bible, and I want to show you just one of the things that we see even as early as the book of Genesis. 
Uh, and then we'll get into some of these points. Just you'll see stuff like this, right? So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then you get to verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness covered over the water and the depths, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Um, and God called the light day, and the, called the, the darkness night, and there was evening, there was morning, one day. So there's that, right? You've got Genesis 1, and you've got already God, and you've got the Spirit of God. Then you've got right here, right? You get into John 1, 1, and he starts to say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was uh, God, and he was with God in the beginning, and all things are created through him, and apart from him, uh, not one thing was created that has been created, and in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness has not overcome it. All this to say that before we get into some kind of points to talk about the Trinity is when you actually read the Bible with your kids, and I think Genesis would be a great place to talk, start with this, right? Because as you get into Genesis, it says that God was walking in the garden. Well, if God doesn't have a form, who's walking in the garden? Well, I, I think that's another question I ask. It's a good one. Who, who's this angel of the Lord character? That we see through. I think there's some great things to work through, um, you know, that we start to talk because we just read the Bible. Uh, but I want to talk about really for now just some some major points on how to talk about the Trinity, how to teach on the Trinity, right? So here's some things that come from the parent guide. If you don't have the parent guide yet, um, let me get over here. Um, here it is. Now, I've got the parent guide right here in my hand. Jackie Fry has been sending those out. Uh, but this is called Cornerstone's Parent Guide. If you like this format of going through Cornerstone's, I would get it. Um, but here's some things that they bring up. Some major points to clarify. Uh, first off, there is one God. That's it. Strict monotheism. Now, each person of the Trinity are fully God. So we need to make sure that we understand that Jesus is just as divine as the Holy Spirit is just as divine as the Father is just as divine, okay? They're not half or partial or anything. They're completely God. Now, the other person, the other thing we need to realize is each person's are distinct, not just different roles. They are existing simultaneously. See, some you'll see is you'll catch a heresy about the Trinity is they'll say, well, he's God at this point, um, and then he becomes the Son at this point, and then he becomes the Holy Spirit. No, he's not shifting roles. Uh, he's not doing that. Um, he, he, he is God, and they are distinct in their persons. Um, they, they're not just fulfilling different roles. Now, one more thing to look at is they act differently in time, but their actions and their actions are described as such, uh, yet the Bible teaches that these actions are done by one God. That's important. Because when you begin to see the Holy Spirit work, you see the Son work, it is God the Father who is working. It's, it's, it's God, ultimately. Uh, when you see God the Father work, when you see the Holy Spirit, when you, all of that, it's still ultimately seen as God, even though distinct actions are given to these individual persons. So I, let me just say this. It's tricky. It, and there have been church councils that have gone over this. Maybe you'll have some kids who, maybe if you've got some older kids, they might push back. But the truth is, people have always been, because you're trying to figure this out, and it's not an easy concept. Uh, it's difficult. But but God is not, uh, if we could completely figure out God, that would kind of be problematic, right? Um, God is God. We are not. And there's some things that we're just not able to completely 100% grasp. And that's okay. It's okay that you may not be able to fully get it and your kids may not. But you need to talk through this. And we just need to point out and be okay with what we see in the Bible like that. Now, another word of caution that comes from the parent guide is this. Is uh, we need to be cautious about how we use analogies, right? Because you'll probably have people who have done this in the past, and maybe you've had it explained to you, maybe you've explained it like this too. Well, God's like water. Um, you know, God, water, it can be both ice, and it can be liquid, and it can be gas. And, and that's, I get it, you know, it's the, the same essence. However, the problem with that is that that's all uh, different, you know, they're, they're not existing at the same time as that, right? You know, you, you're not, you don't have anything that is water and liquid and ice and gas 
uh, you, know, you know, all of that, all as one, you know. And so that's kind of problematic when you teach about that. So I, I know it kind of, it may help a little bit, but it still doesn't really grasp the Trinity. Uh, you might have someone say like this, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a man, I'm a father, I am a son, and I'm a brother. Uh, you know, I'm a husband and a father and a son. Let me just leave it at that, right? The problem is, uh, I'm all of those things, uh, but yet those are distinct roles that I play, um, even though I'm them at one time, but I have to be, you know, I, I'm going to be acting differently when I do one thing versus the other. Uh, and so it doesn't really fit because that's also, they're, they're not, you're not seeing the actions take place as you see in the Bible. And actually, one of the things I love about this parent guide uh, is when you go through it, uh, it, it will kind of work you through some of those analogies uh, as well. Um, but, um, you know, so, uh, but the, the, the Trinity is not different roles, simply that they just play different roles. And then you might have heard the, the egg analogy, right? Well, uh, there's a white egg and there's the shell and then there's the yolk and then there is the, the whatever. I, I'm, I look, I like baking, but what's the third part? Anyways, you know, but the problem is those are all separate elements of the egg. They're, you don't have a full egg when you take away the shell. You don't have a full egg when you take away the yolk. You don't have a full egg when you take away the whites. Got it. Uh, so, so those are just problematic analogies. Um, and so just be careful because you don't want to create an unbiblical view of the Trinity. Um, last kind of thing I want to leave you with as we think through, these are just some verses uh, that, that come uh, up where you see the Trinity actively involved in them. Notice here, so 2 Corinthians uh, 13, 13, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Do you catch that? In that right there is you've got the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. There's all three persons of the Trinity are right there in that verse. Look at the next one. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. Okay, that's another one, right? There's, a, there's another really cool one, right? And I'm going to skip over to this. And it's one that if you're at Royal Palms, if you're at our church, we talk about it all the time. Um, but we're going to go over here. I'm going to go to my Bible software for you. And let's just go right to the very end of Matthew, right? Uh, let's go right here. Notice what Jesus says as he concludes the book of Matthew. He says the following, whenever my computer wants to work out. Um, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Right. So this is key by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is even using this terminology. So you may not be able to fully grasp it, but what we can do is begin to try to teach this to our kids. Try to be able to understand that we do have God the Father. We do have the Son. We have the Holy Spirit. They are one God, uh, yet they are distinct. Uh, and so I think we come back to this. If you, you, know, you, you fall back on what the answer is, and we leave it at that. Uh, and we try to walk through, maybe teach it well, but God is one God in three persons. Okay, that's a lot. It's a little bit of a length through because it's just it's a very important topic and it's tricky to have to talk through sometimes. But uh, let us know if you need help trying to talk through it. But don't be afraid. Take it head on and talk about the Trinity with your kids and 